reclassification of institutions in Europe to facilitate the movement of students across countries in various degree programs. And that was the impetus for a lot of what has happened in the development of practice-based PhD programs. This has created a lot of confusion. Uh, in the United States, PhD programs are not practice-based, they're evidence-driven and more aligned with the kind of tradition that you see in PhDs in other fields. Now, I'm not saying that practice-based work isn't interesting and shouldn't be done and people shouldn't get degrees for it, but it has created a kind of indeterminate standards that we apply to research that I think the field has to sort out. And the difficulty has to do with the titling of these degrees as PhD degrees. In the United States, if you're doing a practice-based doctorate, you do it under a doctor of design. You don't do it. It's, it's like the difference between a PhD in medicine and an MD in medicine. The, the degree titles kind of signify the nature of the study. So if we go back to um, the kind of reference to Frailing's uh, classification of types of research, the first criticism I would raise there is that those classifications really come from Reed's description of art and they don't account for the kinds of things that are going on in design today. So um, it's, it's difficult, I find, to map that directly. One of the frequent um, references in practice-based programs is to Donald Schoen's uh, reflective practice, where he talks about move-making and hypothesis testing as what a practitioner does. But if you read Schoen further in, he's, he also talks about researchers looking at design, and he describes those as people different from designers. <laughs> So I think he's using the term research rather loosely in the reflection discussion and rather specifically when he gets to the research discussion later in his books. And then there's some interesting work. Michael Biggs has done this on the rhetoric of research and he talks about whether research can be knowledge. And Biggs really describes knowledge as something that has to have, um, he, he describes practice as making, producing points of view, not explication. In other words, it has, you have to do something, somebody has to pull it out and do something with it to be knowledge, not just appreciate it as a point of view. And Steven Scribner talks about that, that somebody has to actually act on it, has to extract it and make it knowledge. So I think there are questions about whether these kinds of activities are actually producing knowledge in the same way that evidence-based work, the description I gave you of the study in note taking, is producing knowledge that others can act on and build on. And that creates confusion in the standards applied to that research and to the performance standards for which faculty are accountable in universities. So you see a lot of faculty who are PhD holders going into universities where they're expected to do commissions and exhibitions and artifact driven mm -hmm. work, but they don't have access to the high level research that universities truly value in all of their meritocracy, <laughs> um, money, awards, you know, resources, all of that kind of stuff. And so somewhere along the line, I think we have to sort out these standards. The other issue is that PhD programs are expected to produce future researchers. So that means if you don't have a broad education in methods, how do you anticipate in, in a serious research methods, not just your own personal reflection on your making, how do you anticipate what kinds of methods are going to be necessary to support your students? Because you have to be able to pull from that inventory to create the research workforce. And I think that's something that's going to need an awful lot of attention as well. So, so my sense is not to shut down what people want to do, but to clarify 
what these differences are and to begin to negotiate some standards so that people know what they're getting, either as students when they enroll or as collaborators when they're seeking research partners.